Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Kirk Patty Cake. I'm an author, idiot, and loin streamer. And today we're going to be taking a step back from some of the book news, all of the book news. I have so much book stuff to like update on. <laughs> they, my my subjects just compile, but not this week. This week I wanted to focus more on a story subject that is very concerning and has to do with child abuse. Um, and I'm going to relate it back. This is not specifically about the book challenges or what the newspaper is calling the book bans or what is educational book stuff, but I think that it can be related back to that. And we can kind of see where certain things go and certain mindsets go because of the verbiage being used. So I want to go through two of these articles it has to do with Germany and uh, get your guys' opinion on them. You could tell me what you think about the website because I don't normally use this website. I have never really heard of this website before, but I have checked with a couple other websites to see if what is being reported is true. Um, still though, we gotta check in general what the consensus response is because the news is not always truthful. So there is that. So please forgive me about like less bookish subjects, but I think this does relate to what is being done with the ALA and the books in the book banning and challenges situation. And uh, I want to show also how it can influence how regular people act as well. So I think that we're going to have kind of a roundabout discussion here about the normalization of child abuse and the acceptance of child abuse and uh, I would love to get your thoughts on it because this is a really big subject especially with how the normalization of child abuse in schools by caregivers is being set up and sort of framed as if it's normal. Uh, but before we get started, number one, if you enjoy what I do here on this channel, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. Number two, if you would like to be featured on the channel, check out the links down in the description below. The number one way to be featured here is through Lemoy, the monthly prompt writing contest where I give you a prompt. You write a short story or a um, fragment of that relates to that prompt. And then the first Monday video of the month is always reading a couple of those from the community because you guys are fantastically hilarious, fantastically creative. And a lot of the times those prompts actually come from discussions that are had with some of you guys in the Discord. So if you're not in the Discord, feel free to join. It is just a fun place to hang out. We share and I share a lot of the stuff that I'm working on, uh, especially art. If you wanna see some of the art that I do before my art videos, there's all of that. Um, the second way is if you are an indie author and you have a book out or a book that is coming out, if you submit your first chapter and your cover to the Fresh Meat feature link down below, it'll be read here on the channel, hopefully to help other readers find your work because that is the hardest part about getting your work out there. Find having, having people see it <laughs> and opportunities to be seen. And then the third thing is if you would like to check out any of my works, they're also linked down in the description below. You can also request them at your libraries. Please do. Um, just. You just got to ask your librarians. So with that said, let's get into this subject. And remember, it's going to be a darker subject that has to do with child uh, sexual abuse and um, infiltration through what is considered trusted institutions. And again, we're talking about this in terms of Germany. So this is not America. Um, but I think that we can still have some parallel discussions about what we've been seeing with our institutions, with other institutions, and just have a broader conversation about the attitude toward child abuse. So we'll be using the website redux.info. Uh, I've never really heard of this website before. I did a little bit of background digging. I'm not going to do a heavy background digging, so like, because I'm not a news person. So if you more heavily well know Redux, then feel free to. Um, so it does say that it was launched in 2022 with the intention of creating truly pro-woman, pro-child safeguarding platform that could provide high quality news and opinions and stories to the mainstream. Take that as you will. I don't know. So if you have any information on Redux, feel free to post it. But we're just going to go with what is here as said. So the first article that I saw this in these last couple of weeks that was truly disturbing was it was titled a sexual preference that deviates from the norm. How pedophi pedophiles profiled sympathetically on national public radio in Germany. And this was published August 12th, 2023. So earlier this month, a German national public radio program recently celebrated three men who described themselves as non-offending pedophiles and portrayed them as benevolent. So we've actually covered a couple of different things that have to do with this sort of thing, like The Long Dark Shadow, which I did a book review on. That is a book by Alan Walker, and he 
um, interviewed a handful of pedophiles, I should say like 32, 33 pedophiles, I think. All the demographic information is listed for those people in the back. Um, and so we got an idea of how they describe themselves in these situations with somebody that they feel safe with. And some of those people had no problem saying that they use child pornography and they do not see a problem with child pornography. And many of them call themselves pro-choice, meaning they are pro, they believe the child can make a choice on whether or not to be in an adult situation. And the only harm done to a child is the stigma society has against children. So like that's some of the stuff that you find these people say when they're being interviewed in a safe place. Um, so we've covered some stuff like this in different forms of media. Public radio broadcaster Deutschland Funk DLF released the episode titled Under Control, How Pedophiles Live with Their Addiction on July 26th and include perspectives of a mother who had asked one of the, ch the pedophiles to look after her children. Berlin-based journalist Judith Bassad reviewed the contents of the episode and outlined how DLF promoted sympathy for the idea that pedophilia was a sexual orientation or preference. During the episode, listeners are first introduced to a pedophile named Max, who argues that heterosexual men do not attack every woman that they find sexually attractive. Max claims that pedophilia is simply a sexual preference that deviates from the norm. Disturbingly, Max also claimed to work with an association of men with child abuse fantasies seeking to, quote, promote self-help among pedophiles called a destiny and challenge. The group states that it works at combating the enormous stigma and making information about this sexual preference easily accessible according to its website. That's the same thing that Alan Walker's book said that he was doing. That's also the same thing that um, virtuous pedophiles and before you act, which are both pedophile resources resources they're really just groups for pedophiles to kind of gather around and do what pedophiles do but it's all about destigmatization and if you look back at the long dark shadow book review or you read it for yourself you'll see that most of them if not all of them are talking about wanting to destigmatize you'll even see people in the comments on that video talking about how important it is to destigmatize pedophilia but it's not about harming children and they and they claim that they're not going to hurt children if it's destigmatized but what exactly does destigmatization means it means that there are no longer negative consequences or negative opinion to what you are doing, which means you're going to feel more comfortable doing that thing. It is a lie to say that if it's destigmatized, then you are not going to do it, especially when a number of them also claim that they do not think that children are harmed by what they're doing, despite the decades long um, background of data that shows what child sexual abuse does to the brain. In his personal profile found on the Destiny and Challenge site, Max writes that he is attracted to young girls the age of 5 to 12 years of age. You cannot tell me that that is not just a fetish that is about abuse. Quote, I'm primarily attracted to girls before and during onset of puberty, but I'm also attracted to teenage and adult women, he says. In 2019, three men involved in Destiny and Challenge were invited to speak at the University of Heidelberg for a pedophilia theme day by two student associations. Why are we hosting this? Why are you making, like, obviously allowed to exist as long as you're not offending and people don't find out because let me tell you, some people are going to say you're not going to exist. But um, why is this being humored, especially in academia, especially like this, with if it's not nefarious? Because all I can see from, because all I see coming from this is nefarious reasons. Coming during editing here, um, I have been called anti-intellectual and anti-intellect and anti-freedom of thought by saying that pedophiles and pedophilia doesn't have a place in civilized society and should not be tolerated. And if calling pedophilia what it is, which is child abuse and saying we should not allow it to be open and out in the public and people to be proud of abusing children, if that makes me an anti-intellectual girl, I don't want to be an intellectual. Call me an idiot. I already do it myself. No. You can just keep that label of intellectual for you and your child abusing friends and we'll know. The students came from the medical and psychological departments and were generally quite enthusiastic about the opportunity to learn more about this topic. They complained that not enough of this appeared in their curriculum, so they organized this event themselves. The interest and enthusiasm of the students was very encouraging, reads the event's description on the group's page. Destiny and Challenge claims to have also been involved in the production of a short film titled Children's Friends. Max is said to have been involved in the development of the film, offering advice from the point of view of a pedophile. The film is set to be presented at a film festival later this month. Get ready, if you thought Cuties was a problem, 
if you've got something that is actually from the perspective of a pedophile filled in from the perspective of a pedophile, you can have so much worse. So keep an eye out for children's friends, you guys. The film will now be presented on August 24th, 2023 at the International Shore Film Festival in Detmold. So keep an eye out for that if uh, you want to keep an eye out for this. Another pedophile who was featured on the radio program used the name Franz, states that he views violent child sexual abuse pornography and had fantasies involving cannibalism. How is this not like a, you are a danger to society, you are a danger to children, you are a danger to the people around you, you need to be stopped. Quote, I want to dominate. It's like omnipotence, to destroy the child, to have power over the child, to humiliate and torment them, and sadistic stuff like that, Franz says. Like, this is not somebody normal, this is not somebody healthy, this is not somebody that should really be walking around. Uh, because it's just a matter of time if they haven't already hurt somebody. And that, you know, you could say thought crime. Keep an eye on this guy. That's what I'm saying. Because do not tell me that this is healthy when you're looking at children and you're getting off at the idea of harming children and destroying their lives. That is disgusting. The reporter interviewing the speaker, Feline Salvagio, then introduces a mother named Anna who allows a self-described pedophile named Pascal to babysit her children and compares her tolerance towards his predatory behaviors as being linked to her personal experiences with sexism. During the episode, Pascal admits to becoming sexually aroused while seeing Anna's children walk her through the apartment in the nude. Anna asserts that the experience is not problematic because she has told her children to reject advances from adults, instructing them to push his hands away. That's not going to stop a child that believes they need to please an adult. You're also putting these children consistently in danger by one, allowing them to walk around naked in front of this man who gets aroused, who admits to being aroused in front of them, around them, and then two, letting this man watch your children for you. Like, this is inconscionable. At one point, Pascal reveals that he has worked with children and advocates for pedophiles to be permitted to interact with minors as a form of therapy. Quote, overall, the pedophiles are portrayed as strong and courageous people who, despite suicidal thoughts and social ostracism, dare to go into public to prevent other pedos from becoming violent. Basad spoke with Redux about the radio episode and expressed her concern about how men with urges to abuse children were being held up as praiseworthy. Quote, it is evident that this aims to normalize pedophilia as a sexual identity. Men with perverse rape fantasies involving children are depicted as victims deserving of sympathy, she said. It is concerning enough when such normalization comes from individual pedophile groups. What is even more shocking is that one of Germany's most reputable media brands is providing a platform for these dreadful demands with the support of the state. So you could say that the support for pedophilia and this stuff is um, niche and fringe, but it's not so fringe when it's state sponsored and it's pushed by the biggest media in or one of the biggest media corporations in the country it might still be hell a small held opinion but it is being pushed and forwarded in the mainstream by some of the most powerful people and that is something to be concerned about you don't need mass approval of something for it to take place you just need to be in the position of power Later, or last year, the German national government and the Berlin Senate funded a play about a minor attracted people that casted that cast child abusers in a sympathetic light. A Maps tale told the story of a character named Adam who was portrayed as a young man grappling with his sexual attraction to children. The script is based on true story of a pedophile named Adam who was interviewed by journalist Luke Malone. In the play's description, pedophilia was labeled as a sexual preference disorder and a sexual orientation. If this is true, this is something that we all need to be pay att paying attention to and actively rejecting because the LGBT specifically has had an issue in the past with pedophiles trying to infiltrate and people labeling them as pedophiles and enablers. And obviously they're doing it again. So this needs to be wholesale rejected for what it is, which is child abuse. It's disgusting. It's trying to commandeer whatever things that they can, whatever groups that they can to try and get power and you can see it and they want to harm children and they don't care about anything but getting off at the destruction of innocence and it is disgusting. Following up with this for a similar topic, also posted this month, August 7th of this year, Germany sex education group recommends daycares create sexual games and nude exploration rooms. Germany's leading professional association on sexuality and partnership, Pro Familia, is under fire after issuing a recommendation that daycares implement body exploration rooms and sexual games for young children. So this is where it might come in more with the, the, um, 
the overlay with what schools are doing with introducing children to sexual content, trying to get children to understand sex and sexuality, even as young as age four and five, when they don't need to be introduced to that stuff, they're not going to understand that stuff. And now we've got this, where it's an institution for child care saying, let's have children get naked together in a room where they can explore and touch each other. Excuse me? The issue first came to light when news outlet Build revealed that parents were sent an email from an Arbeiter Wolfart AWO daycare center in the Hanover region, which presents a list of 10 rules explaining how children in the body exploration room would be encouraged to pet and examine themselves and other children. So encouraging child abuse of children. And um, obviously there's going to be an adult in that room watching, if not doing more than watching. Quote, all children, especially preschoolers, are aware of the places in the facility where nudity and body exploration can take place, reads the message. Each child decides for themselves whether or with whom they want to play physical and sexual games. No child should be playing sexual games. Let's get that. Girls and boys pet and examine each other only as much or as it is comfortable for themselves and other children. This is grooming and sexual abuse, and you're breaking down boundaries in order to abuse children. That's what that is. Other rules outlined in the communication stipulate that children must be within the same age group with a gap no more than two years, and that at no time should a child stick anything into another child's body openings. One shocked father told Build, quote, My daughter is five years old. I don't want boys groping her. I have another child in another daycare center where there is no such thing as an exploration room. Another father responded, I'm devastated. We were told that this was determined by the Ministry of Education. As parents, we are intimidated. What options do we have if we don't want this? So here you see Ministry of Education is in charge of this. So pretending that the state or the schools can't abuse your children is absolute bullocks. The Ministry of Education in Lower Saxony responded to the concerns of parents by terminating the program before it was put into effect. A representative told Build that at the end of May, the State Youth Welfare Office reported to the Ministry of Education that the pedagogical concept of the physical exploration rooms in the daycare centers cannot last and that this puts the well-being of the child at risk. However, Dirk von Osten, chairman of the board of the AWO region in Hanover, disagreed. Quote, exploring one's own body is part of child development during which they also learn to recognize their own limits, to express them clearly, and to develop shame. They don't need to do that with strangers at school or daycare or with other kids like this. Like, get out. Children also play role-playing games in their group rooms. We do not see any child welfare endangerment in this. Bro, playing a role-playing game like House or Dra Dungeons and Dragons or something like that is not the same as a body exploration room for a five-year-old. This is not the first time the policy recommended by Pro Familia has been called into question. In 2013, Deutsche Welle asserted that Pro Familia is stuck in a pedophilia swamp and emphasized how the sexual education organization has repeatedly published the works of pro-pedophile lobbyists. The Berlin newspaper Tagesch Spiel investigated articles published by Pro Familia magazines and found that pro pedophile views were represented in works released in 1980 and 1990. An article by psychologists and educator Wolf Vogel, dating back to 1987, for example, reflects without prejudice on the cause of pedophile lust. Pro Familia has also platformed Rudiger Lautmann, a sociologist and gay rights advocate who has a lengthy history of normalizing pedophilia. Lautmann on authored a book titled The Lust for Children, A Portrait of Pedophiles. The book is based on his interview with 60 men who admitted to sexually abusing young children, primarily boys. It's, look, they'll say that they don't touch children unless put in a space where it's like not demonized and then they go, well, yeah, they have touched children. But they only say they haven't so long as there's a stigma. Otherwise, they're not going to admit to it for obvious reasons. Quote, they really love children, read their every wish, organize trips, buy toys, and are only comfortable around children, Lautman says of the 60 pedophiles that he interviewed. That's because there's a power dynamic. They are in charge. They can manipulate. Bro, if you're like this and you only want to be around children because that's where you feel the most comfortable so that you want to be romantic with them, you need to go to therapy to get fixed, not near yourself to children. Released in 1994, the book became popular with pedophiles for its sympathetic portrayal of adult attraction to children with Lautman described as a sexual orientation. 
uh, which Lautman described as a sexual orientation, and it repeatedly asserts that children are capable of sexual autonomy. The same thing is done in Alan Walker's book. Check it out or check out my review of it here on the channel. Quote, for me, it is very clear that there do exist relationships that do not require any intervention, Lautman wrote. The children cling to their lovers and can leave them any moment if they choose. This ignores the power dynamic, the brain function, the development. There is no such thing as a child having an adult lover and it not being abusive and predatory. And that's also the same thing that if you put somebody in a lover boy situation, if you put somebody in an abducted from their country situation uh, and forced to work be because they were tricked, you're like, well, they can leave anytime they want and they just choose to be here. You know what you're doing. You are a predator. You are an abuser. You are a controller. In 1995, Lautman repeated the thesis of his book in an article for Pro Familia, a leading NGO which provides resources on sexual health. In Pro Familia's official magazine, Lautman's article states, quote, Our study defines the term pedophile, distinguishes it from incest, abuse, and sadism. We prove that such men exist. The thesis, therefore, the desire for a child is an independent and differentiated sexual form. Pedophilia is therefore a sexual orientation like any other and no longer a perversion. An article by Lautman was again published by Pro Familia in 2013 titled Sexual Research Can Change Reality. Last year, after a public outcry, Lautman was blocked from participating in the creation of a daycare center coordinated by Berlin's Senate Department for Youth, Education, and Families. So this man, you've just seen the kind of stuff that he said about children and sexualizing children and putting children in child sexual assault situations. He was going to be a coordinator for the Senate Department of Youth, Education, and Family. So don't just blindly trust these people who are in positions over children who are in public capacity, who are in public official capacity, because bad people get there, bad people run certain things, and just because it is by the government, you shouldn't just suddenly trust it. He had initially been one of the members on the board overseeing aspects of the project. Critics have also pointed out that one leading policymaker behind Pro Familia, Uwe Sillert, has questionable views regarding sexuality and children and has ties to the controversial sexologist Helmut Kentler, who had been described as a fatherly mentor to Sillert. Kentzler, who campaigned throughout his life for the abolition of laws which prohibited the sexual abuse of children under 14 years of age, was responsible for a state-funded project that saw children sexually abused by pedophiles in an experiment to prove that adult child sex was harmless. Beginning in 1969, Kentler's project had placed foster children in the homes of pedophiles in an attempt to test his theory that pedophiles could make good foster fathers. Kentler had theorized that the pedophile's attraction to children would result in a strong drive to take care of them. Yeah, that's not how it works, especially not when you see your victims as sex objects, sex toys to be used and disposed of, or like the guy in the previous one said, he just wants to destroy children. It's not about taking care of children or love of children. These are objects to pedophiles. And you cannot let children be anywhere near pedophiles. Quote, these people were able to put up with these mentally retarded boys only because they were in love with them, infatuated with them, crazy about them, Kentler explained in 1970. Kentler's project was approved by the Berlin state and the pedophiles' foster families received monthly allowances from the government to care for, for the orphaned children. According to Frank Harath, a lecturer, so um, just so you know, taxpayer money went to paying pedophiles to sexually abuse orphaned children. According to Frank Horath, a lecturer in sexology and co-founder of the Institute of Sex Education, sex education in Germany was shaped by Helmut Kentler and Uwe Sillert. Sex, quote, quote, sex education would not be what it is today if Uwe Sillert had not helped shape it over the quarter of a century as an affair of the heart. Like his fatherly friend Helmut Kentler, Uwe Sillert was an was and is extremely important for the both sex education theory and the practice of professional sexuality support over the years, always innovative and initiative, staying curious about what is new and having a lasting effect. Haroth wrote in 2009, Sielert, co-founder of the Society of Sex Education, is a scientific advisor of the Dortmund Institute for Sex Education and professor of education at the University of Kiel. He has authored several books on child sexuality. In one example, Sielert co-authored a sexual education book with Haroth aimed at children ages four to six years old, in which explicit sexual activity between children is depicted and the readers are encouraged to imitate masturbation and sexual interactions.
Now, if this sounds familiar to you, a book aimed at children with depictions of sex and encouraging sexual interactions. Let's look at this book that just came out in Australia. I'm doing the same thing. So this isn't so contained, not to mention it's not any different, much different, if at all, from this book is gay, which does the same thing. Though it's not, though, though this book is gay is not necessarily aimed at four to eight year olds. So it's aimed much lower than it says that it is based on the way that it is written. There's also a book review walkthrough of that on this channel. Last year, Redux reported on a play about the minor attracted... Last year, Redux reported on a play about minor attracted people that was funded by the German national government in the Berlin Senate. So why is the German national government funding pedophile approval PR campaigns, basically? Titled A Map's Tale and based on a true story of a pedophile named Adam who was interviewed by journalist Luke Malone, the premiere of Fe the premiere of the play, the play... The play premiered February 2023 at Theater Untern Dach in Berlin. In the play's description, pedophilia is labeled a sexual preference disorder and a sexual orientation. Let's take a look at this article really quick, shall we? The play is based on the true story of a pedophile named Adam who was interviewed by Luke Malone. Malone created an episode about the man's story for the American Life podcast titled Help Wanted, Tarred and Feathered. Malone also published an article on Medium that related to his research going into more detail about about child pornography the pedophile had consumed as a young man and what he found attractive about young children. Malone's article on Adam's story was titled, You're 16, You're a Pedophile, You Don't Want to Hurt Anyone, What Do You Do Now? and was nominated for the 2014 National Magazine Award for Public Interest. In his article, Malone detailed how the pedophile began watching child abuse materials at a young age, but became distressed after viewing a video of a young boy screaming while being raped. Quote, as he watched the scene unfold, Adam was transfixed and then quickly revolted. He reached over and stopped the video. It wasn't like anything he'd witnessed in two years that he'd been viewing child pornography. Until now, everything he'd seen seemed to suggest that the, ch the kids... Everything he'd seen seemed to suggest that the kids liked it. But this toddler was clearly in pain. That's just like... How do you get there? It's so sickening. The article then described how Adam first became attracted to young children at age 11 and is primarily attracted to boys ages 3 through 7 and girls 5 to 8. When asked what he found attractive about children, he said small bodies, hairless legs, and you know, things like that, like small genitalia. Malone's research sympathetically portrayed pedophilia and even draw lines between pedophile rights movements and the gay rights movements. Quote, how do these young men and women negotiate that with no viable role models or support networks, there is no it gets better for pedophiles, Malone complained. It does get better by not being a pedophile anymore. <laughs> Go and get actual help, not affirmation. You don't need affirmation as a pedophile. Not sorry. Malone's podcast and article inspired a map's tale. In his tweet, Malone noted that both the German federal government and Berlin Senate were supporting the project and provided a link to Monstrous Mess, a self-described feminist theater collective producing the play. The homepage for the map's tale, the branding of the nationally funded Neustart program for culture is displayed along with the Berlin Senate. The Berlin Senate has a disturbing history of providing a funding to concerning projects the most infamous of which is widely known as the Kentler Project, the one where they put children into the homes of pedophiles, as you, as you know. I'll leave a link to this in the description below if you want to read more about it. It is very sickening. Beginning in 1969, sexologist Helmut Kentler received support from the Berlin Senate to launch a pilot program which placed foster children in the homes of pedophiles in an attempt to test his theory that pedophiles could make good foster fathers. In addition to being supported by the German government, the play is set to receive funding from a number of other initiatives, including Preventing a Network Dunkelfield, Charité of Charité, Berlin. Dunkelfield was launched in 2005 with the aim of reducing the stigma surrounding pedophilia in a purported effort to encourage pedophiles to come forward and seek support and treatment, an approach first popularized by Before You Act, a pedophile support group, which is also cited as popularizing the term minor attracted people. This is mentioned in Alan Walker's book, um, super sketchy. It says the difference between Before You Act and a virtuous pedophile, the two American groups for pedophiles that are mentioned the, the two big groups for american pedophiles that are mentioned um is that virtuous pedophile theoretically says that it has taken a stance to say that it is wrong to want to be in a relationship with children whereas before you act refuses 
to make a moral judgment on um, abusing children. While Before You Act argues that destigmatization would empower those who are sexually attracted to children to seek help and therapy, which, okay, question on this, and I asked this in the Alan Walker video, if you say that there is nothing wrong with something because you're destigmatizing it, then why would somebody seek help for it? That is an underlying issue with all of this, is they're like, oh, but they'll seek more help if you tell them it's fine. But if it's fine, then they're not going to seek help because you've told them that it's fine. So, like, there is double speak going on here. The organization was funded by a convicted child rapist who stated that his goal was not to prevent offending, but to succeed in the normalization of pedophilia where NAMBLA had failed. In 2009, Michael Milesheimer advised his fellow pedophiles that the new approach championed by Before You Act would focus around garnering public sympathy by falsely claiming their intention was to assist the prevention of child sexual abuse by destigmatizing pedophilia. The exchange took place on Boy Chat, the Internet's largest running pedercast pederast the internet's largest running pederast message board where milesheimer used his real name to post and engage with his pedophile colleagues some pedophiles on a boy chat were concerned that before you act would covertly attempt to prevent them from engaging in sexual relationships with children to those members milesheimer asserted quote be assured that you will find no current reference to the prevention of offending you can take that to the bank so uh yeah there is a very open child attempts to normalize child trafficking child abuse and it's all done under the guise of education by educators by people in political office and by the media to say that you are crazy if you have a problem with it and it is not just overseas where we are seeing this here is an article back from 2018 from somebody in the United States, and I think there were some TED Talks about this too, where scholars call pedophilia an unchangeable sexual orientation that should be accepted by society. There are many people claiming this, going around claiming this, and then they are putting books of sexual content in the hands of children. Or if you go and listen to adults who are groomed as children or young teenagers into having inappropriate relationships with adults, even so recently as Miranda sings, they will tell you that it was these adults breaking down barriers of discomfort, of, of asking questions that they didn't know better to not get into. And then they felt abused and led on and groomed into being in these relationships or being as open as they were. That's how it's predatory. That's why pedophilia, that's one of the reasons why pedophilia is always predatory. And that's why when people say, as educators, they need to put these books in classrooms for children, they are openly saying that they want to break down barriers to groom children. And that's where the stance of your grooming children is coming from. Because we see this happening. And not only does it happen with the open advocacy and exposing children and minors to sex through a trusted relationship or an authoritative relationship like a favorite teacher, but then you also see it through people's apathy of child abuse and the sexualization of minors' bodies. Where you've got people like this man, Lido Cool, justifying and defending sexualization of children as he says, quote, I realize that I don't care. Festivals is one thing, images is another, and when I go outside, I see parents sometimes dressing their kids in slutty outfits without any festivals. I'm not even Japanese. There's nothing bad in that. It's just children, not Holy Grail, and given that such children often touch my hobbies, which I somehow have to give up because of them, I really don't care what fate befalls them at best. Where then if you say, hey, you're an adult in society, sharing society with these children. It is kind of part of your job to make sure that you are not sexually offending or abusing children when you're out in public as a member of society. And it gets, and it gets, haha, no, sounds funny. But it's a parent's duty to protect their kids, not mine. Not my duty to grow, teach, or foster them. Not my duty to choose what's good for children either. And when those parents come onto something that's mine, when the children need it, it's treading I'm treating it as robbery. So he's seeing children as abusers when he is abuser, when he knows better, and he is a selfish dingbat. And then turns it into, but you can try doing it and giving all of your mortal possessions to kids to be raised properly. You could raise someone else's kids at your expense. I shall not. Not being abusive, not being sexually abusive, and also when you say you don't care what fate befalls children, is totally different than saying give up all of your possessions to take care of someone else's children. That is such a straw man, a disgusting argument to, to defend your child abuse. So I just had to point this guy out because this is an apathetic take.
So this is the danger of constantly one showing yourself, exposing yourself to pornography to the point that you dis disassociate with the effect of pornography too. You actually actively hope that something happens to children because you see them as aggressors on you. For what reason? Because you can't get your kumis while you're talking to children? Because you think that children should be exposed to that because you're an adult? You know better. So this is also one of the things that is happening right now is you have adults who have either spent so much time online or their own boundaries have been erased so much. I've seen other adults, especially even on BookTube, where they're talking about some of these banned books or challenged books and um, saying that they should be given to children because these adults don't understand boundaries or child emotional development to the point that they think that it's okay to abuse children. Um, so that apathy and that desire and that even hatred of children is actually a problem that is just becoming ever more, ever more to the top of things in every facet as the sex and the sex addiction kind of spreads. Taking this back to the books, we see it as more and more books in YA and in children's literature end up getting super sexualized as nonfiction books are being pushed on younger and younger children to sexualize them as adults are clearly happy and proud on social media talking about sexualizing seven and eight year olds. We see this spreading. So that's why I found it important to bring up these topics, even though they are in Germany, even though it is fringe, I did want to bring attention to the subject because I think that it is all connected in what we're seeing and we need to be careful. There's not a problem with sex in fiction. There's not a problem with you having an interest in smut but there is a problem when you can't differentiate what needs to be done to protect children, what child sexual abuse is, when people are taking advantage of your open-mindedness and using it to hurt children or normalize their desire to harm children, when you are platforming child sexual abusers that openly advocate for destroying children's lives as their fetish and you're supporting it, not just putting it on a platform, but supporting it, saying it's a good thing, saying that it should be destigmatized. This is something that needs to be talked about and it's disgusting that it is just being let to be out there and even celebrated in some cases. Um, but those are my thoughts. That was the subject. Sorry to be so depressing on this Saturday morning, but you know, sometimes you gotta talk about what you gotta talk about. And I, want to, I wanted to give more context as to like, why the sexual content for me and the, the hidden in the grass stuff is so concerning to me uh, in everything that we're looking at and the excuses that are being made with like the book community and the books being pushed in schools and libraries, especially. So uh, let me know your thoughts on that, how this relates, what you're seeing, how this relates to the books and the media. Um, what fears you might have, anything that you might have noticed in your life that might connect to some of these things or might have, you might see around you. And with that said, thank you. The best thing that we can do is ha keep open conversation and keep our eyes peeled and continue to care about each other, even if we have our differences, you know? So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend and don't die.